Hi guys, this is India the Stripper Goddess. In today's video, we're gonna talk about racism in white strip clubs. I know that there are a lot of black girls that wanna work in white strip clubs. They don't really know what it's gonna be like or maybe you do work in a white strip club. I mean, who knows what the situation is, but if you wanna know what it's like being a black girl, being in a white strip club, then look no more, because I'm about to tell you. First things first, I pop up, freaks all the honeys. You see that? That whole vibe right there? You can't do that. I saw this TikTok the other day and she was saying that black people can't be black all day. White people can be white all day. But black people can't be black all day. And that just was so crazy because the way that my mind is set up, it's like, I don't wake up in the morning and like, I'm black, I'm this, I'm that, you know what I mean? I just feel like I'm a woman, I have my dreams, I have my aspirations, I have my goals, and every day I'm pursuing that, you know what I mean? But sometimes you think to yourself like, dang, like, okay, I can't, I can't wear my hair like that because if I wear my hair like that, or I can't say that because if I say that, I'm gonna look like this, and it really, really is a true thing. Like, we are really labeled, and it's not always in the best energy. And so I wanted to make this video because I want to empower the black girls that are working in white strip clubs. And I want to let you know what you could be doing, what you could face, and how to rise above the situation. So the first club that I worked at was the Cheetah in Atlanta, okay? If you've ever been there, it's a huge club. I mean, huge, okay? It has multiple catwalks on it and then a main stage. And then they've got a five-star restaurant. They have the executive room. They have a penthouse. They have their VIP. They ha it's, it's a very, very big club. It's a gentleman's club. It is not a strip club. It's a gentleman's club, which means that there are rules and regulations. It's not the easiest okay so if we're going to talk about how easy it would be to get into an establishment like this my story is going to be different than the white girl sitting next to me it just is what it is <laughs> i auditioned three times to be hired at this club you might be looking at me and like whoa why would you have to audition three times to get into this club well i asked myself that too i was very very surprised when the idea of being an exotic dancer even came up, I just thought, okay, I'm beautiful, I'm sexy, I know how to dance, and I enjoy being seductive, I'm gonna kill it. But once I actually started doing the job, I realized, okay, it's a lot, lot more than this because people will just simply have a preference and not wanna deal with you because you are not their preference. And that could be tough. My first audition was very very cool it was very very dope um these guys kept coming up to the stage trying to tip me and house mom was like she's just auditioning she's auditioning but she was like keep going she had me dance the whole set and the way that this club was set up is there would be multiple girls on stage and i just was doing my thing and i and i remember like looking around me and they were just like you killed it like you did your thing like you have to think at this club it's all about the seduction of it you know what i mean it's not about like bah, bah, bah. like you couldn't get on your knees you couldn't show your private parts there were so many things that you could not do it was simply about being a fantasy and moving slow and you know just being really cute with it or whatever and so at that time i had a short haircut it was like real cute on the sides i'll show a picture they sent a picture to the owner and he didn't like me so they didn't hire me try getting a wig and then come back so then i did that they still didn't hire me and then i went again and they finally hired me and you'd be thinking that it would be like oh wow i'm hired but it's like wow like now i'm working on eggshells because now it's like you know i'm in here but clearly like you didn't want me in here but i finally like made my way through the door so I'm here now so I kind of just like played it cool and I didn't want to like you know ruffle anybody's feathers I just wanted to stay out the way get my money go home and this is how me working by myself like really came to play because 
one of my roommates at the time, this is a very close friend of mine, um, I remember we walked up to this group of guys, this group of white guys, and you know, we were like, hi, da 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 da, -da you know, I'm this, I'm that, how are you? And um, he was like, I don't want you, I want her. And I just remember like how that made me feel, like it just, it wasn't embarrassing, it was more so, it just, it, it, it hurt. It didn't take too long for me to realize that the girls that were my friends in the back and that loved me and we were cool, we weren't like that on the floor. They weren't looking out for me on the floor. They weren't calling me because why call the black girl when you know that they're not gonna like her? Why won't I just pick a white girl? And that's a hard truth to swallow, especially when you go your whole life being considered a very attractive person to now you're in a situation amongst all these white people and it's like you're just not good enough. So it, it, it bothered me a lot. It bothered me a lot and it made me nervous. It made me afraid to like, you know, approach people because that's basically the name of the game. Like, yeah, like, of course, like you can walk to the club and guys will come and get grab you and come up to you or whatever. But at the end of the day, you're supposed to be you're supposed to know every movement that's going on in that club, every inch of it, where people are. And you're approaching people and you're, you know, doing that whole thing. So it made me nervous because I'm like. That's when those thoughts started coming coming in like am i good enough am i gonna say the right thing am i gonna whatever and like i said i was doing it by myself so i really didn't really know what everybody else was experiencing but like they were probably on a normal night between like 70 and like 85 girls and predominantly white girls and so out of the sprinkle of black girls that they had in there, there was this one girl, she was so cute, okay? She had the perfect body. She had like that cheerleader body, like super small waist, little bit of curves, nice, like she just had a beautiful, be her name was Blossom. Beautiful, beautiful body. Very young girl in college. And she, she came to work and she had this hairstyle this one night and she gets on stage, and you know, when you get your hair done, you're feeling yourself, you're feeling great. She felt really cute. Was it a white hairstyle? No. It was like a shortcut, but it was really, really cute. It was a really pretty shortcut. Think about like a Keisha Cole shortcut, you know what I mean? And she went on stage, and she was feeling so great. She was feeling great about her hair, herself, and nobody gave her any money. She didn't make any money at all. And she came back to the dressing room and she was just crying. And I had to stop what I was doing and talk to her because I just, I felt her pain. I understood it. I understood the way that white people put this energy upon you that, okay, you're going to have to look this way and you're going to have to act like this and you're going to have to make sure your hair looks like this and blah, 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 blah. Okay, choose a name. It needs to be the right name. This whole European image is like, forced on black people so hard that once you start working in these white clubs it goes as deep as like you don't really want to be in the sun like that because you don't want to get too dark because you know if you get too dark it's gonna mess your money up i've had conversations with black girls that mostly dealt with white clients and they saw a difference in their money whether it was like they were super dark or super tan or whether it was like they were lighter or whatever and that's just sad because you're the same person like i said i started working at a white club in atlanta the cheetah when i had my son i came back home to florida and i started working at the dollhouse okay and i had to audition there again like three or four times and it was just exhausting and it was ridiculous and it, it really like wreaks havoc on your ego and, and the way you feel about yourself. And that's why I wanted to make this video because I want you to know that regardless of where you are in your life or how people are making you feel, you are beautiful and you have everything that you need. You're gonna have the right thing to say. You're gonna be entertaining. You are quality and you have everything that you need to make the money that you wanna make and be the best version of you inside of that club. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what background you are coming from. You are quality. And to think that these white men are better than you or the put these white men on this pedestal 
as if they're just so high up here that you're fearing if you can even reach that level. Fuck all that, okay? You are that bitch, period. It doesn't matter who these white men are, where they've been, how much money they have. You are quality. And that's what I have to teach myself. That's what I have to tell myself. Like, I don't care how you view it. I'm still going to come to you as an intelligent, beautiful woman. Because that's what I am at the end of the day. Whether you want to look at me as being black or being this or whatever it is, I'm coming to you as my true self. And so to fast forward to when I started working at the dollhouse, I just got to a point eventually where I was just, I was just tired of trying to keep this image up, this white image, super long hair, you're doing your makeup a certain type of way, you're acting a certain type of way, you're being classy, you don't want to say the wrong thing or whatever. I was just like tired of not being able to do what I wanted to do. So I got goddess locks. I was in the dressing room for not even five minutes. Before house mom was like, management wants you in the back. When I get back there, he says to me, if you don't make no money, don't be mad at me. Your hair, I don't like it. You're not going to make money. Don't get upset when you don't make money. I was like, whoa, is this racial profiling? He was like, no, I'm just telling you, no, it is though. White people, they always want to make comments and make remarks and do things. But then when you call them out on it, you want to act like you don't know what anybody's talking about. You know what I'm talking about. But you just think that I am so low in confidence that you telling me that you don't like my hair is going to make me walk right into the mirror and cut it all out. No, I like it. That's why I got it. The way you see me, it's not really real. It's not. And that's what people need to understand. You need to respect people for who they are and how they are naturally coming to the forefront. You shouldn't have to change yourself. You shouldn't have to be somebody that you're not. If you can't appreciate somebody for who they are, you want to take everything from us. You want to take our music. You want to watch, our, watch us play sports. You want to do all this extra shit, but you don't want to give nobody no credit. You don't want to set anybody up for success. You'll take a token nigga. You feel me? You'll take one, maybe two. But what about all of us? What about all of us that can be successful, that can leave generational wealth to our families? I'm not going to sit here and act like it was the hardest thing working in a white strip club because it wasn't. Did I make money? Did I make hella money? Yes, of course. But was I making the same amount of money as these white girls? No. And that's hard. That's hard. The girl I told you about earlier, one night she comes home. I was like, oh, so how was work? She was like, it was okay. She was like, you know, I made like $800, but, and I was like, do you know how hard I had to work to make $800? Like, are you kidding me? Every, you don't even have to, you don't even have to do anything. You just being white is making you money. I have to prove myself when I go up to these men. I have to prove that I'm worth them giving me money. I have to prove that I have quality. And in turn, that makes me look like a bitch, or I'm snobby, or I'm this or I'm that. I'm facing the odds, and I'm beating them. And you get these black girls that come to these white strip clubs, and they're scared, and they don't know what to do, and they sit in a corner. Don't you sit in no corner. You're a goddess. They want to be you. They wish they were you. They all do. So you own that, and you smile, and you be happy. And you dance and you get that bag and then you go home and you count your blessings and you come in and you do it again and you create a future for yourself. That's why I made this video. Because I'm tired of seeing black girls get into these white strip clubs. Finally, they know how much money's in there and then you don't make it because you don't know what to do. I had a black girl come up to me and she was like, girl, I just wish I was white. Get the fuck out of here. Don't you ever come up to me talking about you wish you was white. We got to work harder, but it don't mean that we can't get it done. We might have to say a little more to get the bag, but it don't mean that it can't be done. The whole point is that with white privilege, it's easier. Like I said, you could just be white and walk up and all of a sudden he's throwing money at you. You could just be white and walk up and all of a sudden all your bills are getting paid. You could just be white and walk up and be ditzy and sloppy and drunk and next thing you know, this nigga can't get enough of you. But when you come up with some strength, 
When you come up with goddess energy, that scares them. Period. That's why they're saying what they're saying now. Because they're scared. Because they know how powerful we are. They always knew that. But they were just in a financial situation where they could say, oh, you know what? I'm going to buy you. Teach me everything that you know. Build my whole nation. And then I'm still going to keep you oppressed. So when you work in a white strip club, I'm telling you right now, you need to know how to hold your own. And it doesn't mean that you have to be angry. It doesn't mean that you have to be nasty. It doesn't mean that you have to be mean. It means that you have to know your work. Don't sit here and allow these men to play you. If he's giving her $100 a minute, you need to ask for $200. And believe that you can get that. If anybody in the strip club industry want to look at me a certain type of way it's because you know I'm about my bag. You know that I'm serious about my money because you know why? Because when I first started, I had all these white men making me uncomfortable with the greatness within me. And it made me question myself and it made me doubt myself and it made me sit in the corner and feel like I wasn't good enough and be scared of what I had to bring to the table because I felt like they didn't want what I had to bring to the table. But you know what? Now I am the table. And either you're going to sit at it or you're not because I'm going to get him to get it. When you own your power though, you got to be careful because what's one of the most scariest things in America? Being a powerful black person. So the reason I bring that up is because I had an incident. I just had my son, went back to the club. I said, you know what, I'm going to do it all different now. I'm going to believe in myself. I'm going to come with a whole entirely different energy. I'm going to start making crazy, crazy money, right? Went in there, it was on some weird, but I made it happen. Because I own my power. Once I started owning my power, now all of a sudden I'm getting called to the office. Now all of a sudden I'm getting this. I'm getting that. Y'all looking at me. Y'all watching me.